dual blades because why use one sword when you can use two it's just basic math recently i've been asked a lot in the comments about my dual blades build or dual blades information in general for sunbreak since i'm now over 100 hours deep into dual blades in sunbreak and after lots of testing and research thanks to some great dual blades people out there i think i can talk about it dual blades in sunbreak are simply incredible thanks to the high element numbers on the various best element dual blades mixed with the improvements to demon mode and the new spiral slash which incredibly works with element damage, our output potential is massive and it's very exciting. Before we get into it, I want to thank Rage, aka Josh, for all his help on the math and the build crafting while we've been delving into Sunbreak. And also I want to shout out and thank Pilgrim for his OG Rise Jewel Blades guide and speedrunner Yuki for the invaluable examples to watch and learn from. I'm certain as we go into Sunbreak, these two are going to be incredible resources for Jewel Blades in general, so please look them both up. This video will cover the new aspects of Dual Blades and Sunbreak, and it's not a basic tutorial on Dual Blades. So it's going to assume you know the very basics, but should still serve as a useful resource even to new Dual Blades players. And while this is not a build video, I will mention some skills you'll want to get, and I will follow up soon with a proper video on the build. Okay, with all of that said, welcome back to Rage Gaming. My name is Olo, and let's talk Dual Blades. So in Sunbreak, Dual Blades had some big changes. A lot of them good, but there was one that was a bit of a pain. And example of that would be, say, Piercing Bind, which animation is now quicker and nicer, uh, but Feral Demon Mode. That requires twice as much Demon Gauge building, so that sucks. New in Sunbreak, though, we have two Silk Bind attacks in the form of Spiral Slash and Iron Shine Silk, two fantastic abilities you will be wanting to use quite a lot. And we have a new Switch skill, the Slide Slash, which is awesome for ground Jewel Blades players and pretty useful for aerial players too. Overall, though, I believe Jewel Blades has done very well in Sunbreak, so let's go into how and why. The main detail is, of course, Demon Mode, which, while active, will give you 35% element and status boost. That is a huge increase to your element and status, which combines with other details to lead to huge numbers we're seeing. Meanwhile, Feral Demon Mode provides a 20% raw damage boost, which is still awesome, but there's that major downside. They seem to have doubled the amount of damage you need to do to fill up the Demon Gauge while in Feral Mode. That means building your Arch Demon Gauge while in Feral is a really bad idea because it takes so much longer. Therefore, if you are playing Feral Demon Mode primarily, you'll still want to start the fight and build your gauge in general in regular Demon Mode, then swap to Feral when it's active. Fortunately, that really shouldn't be an issue because you'll fill it once using Demon Mode, then swap to Feral, and you probably won't have to worry about doing that again. Here's a fantastic detail, however. Arch Demon Mode is even better now. Newly buffed, its element scaling was increased to 20%, which helps us maintain our DPS massively while using that Demon Gauge. Baseline and then your element output is just higher now throughout the entire hunt and I believe it's also at 20% for status even though that's not mentioned in these vague patch notes. There's two other major details found in the patch notes we should highlight though. Demon Flurry Rush has had its own buff, increasing the attack power on part 1 and 2 of the combo and then the attack power, element and status scaling were increased for the finisher. Essentially this means ground dual blades has been buffed a bit in Sunbreak which was completely overshadowed by aerial dual blades in the original Original release. However, thanks to the ridiculous potential of Demon Flight, combined with the new Siltbind Spiral Slash, I still believe Aerial Dual Blades is the best way to DPS. But what it does mean is that Ground Dual Blades is more relevant than it was. And if you prefer to play Ground Style, well, it's better now. Not everyone wants to speedrun, and that's fair enough. There's one more major detail I should mention, though. It's Blade Dance. It had its attack power increased on the 10th, 11th, and 12th hit, which is only good news. Of course, Piercing Bind was best used with Blade Dance making that combo much more potent thanks to this buff. Now let's talk silk binds and switch skills then. Our two new silk binds in Sunbreak are incredible, flat out brilliant additions to the game, I really like them. Spiral Slash is just nuts for your element builds. You pull back and then corkscrew into your target, dealing a nice burst of special damage via many consecutive hits. But what's truly insane about this skill is that element, status and affinity will increase this skill's damage. Not to mention, just using it will also increase your demon gauge, which is very appreciated. Our original and only offensive silk bind attack, Piercing Bind, on the other hand, only benefited from increased raw damage, such as when, yeah, you're in Feral Demon mode. Piercing Bind just doesn't benefit from either element or affinity, and that limits its potential massively if you're using an element Jewel Blades build. Spiral Slash, on the other hand, has no such limits. Combine Spiral Slash with an element build and your demon mode, which is increasing the element boost by 35%, on a target weak to said element, well, that's insane damage. 
We can use Spiral Slash from the ground or use it from up in the air, which will pull us down like a missile. You combine that with Demon Flight, well then you've got a stupidly effective, simple and easy to use combo. However, I should note that Spiral Slash has one awkward requirement you'll want to know about. The hit zone needs to be 45 or higher on the target you're hitting, just like the requirements for a weakness exploit to work. So if you Spiral Slash into a part with a hit zone lower than 45, you'll awkwardly slide into or pass the target doing this pathetic amount of damage. That ties into the concept of dual blades perfectly though, because you should only be attacking the best hit zones for your weapon, the weakest points. So it makes sense that you would also be normally aiming Spiral Slash at those places either way. Meanwhile, we also have Iron Shine Silk, which is way simpler. When you use this Silk Bind, you'll perform a very sexy Sharpen animation. And then for the duration of that buff, you will gain sharpness every time you successfully evade or counter an attack. So that means evading at the last possible second to avoid damage or using, say, the original Siltbind counter of Dual Blades, Shrouded Vault, to counter the damage and gain sharpness. Essentially, whenever you need sharpness, you should be using Iron Shine Silk and then look to either evade damage or ideally counter it using Shrouded Vault. We'll certainly want that in our gameplay to maintain the highest sharpness a weapon has without having to stop to actually sharpen. Next, we have this slide slash combo. So by using your evade attack in combination, you can do a right slide slash or a left slide slash depending on which way you're pulling the stick at the time. What's great about this attack is the fact that it doesn't cost any stamina to do just like Demon Flurry Rush. So you see my stamina at the top, it's basically empty. Watch how I'm still moving, I'm still evading and I'm still attacking while recovering stamina at the same time. So this is an incredible way to get your stamina back after say spending it all, maybe after a demon mode and keep attacking, keep moving, keep repositioning while maximizing your damage and recovering stamina for your next demon mode. It also works with the Demon Flight, so you can use it in aerial mode, but as you can see, it's not as smooth in combination. You must use an Evade, which means that the stamina recovery is not nearly as effective, but it's still good and still provides a way to move without stamina. But now it's time to get to the point. Element builds for Dual Blades are so stupidly strong in Sunbreak that I do genuinely believe that raw Dual Blades builds are irrelevant because of how overshadowed they actually are. Trust me, take it from me, I've been trying to make a raw build work for like the last week. Element builds are just superior. And that's great news because it actually means Dual Blades is super strong in Sunbreak. The downside is you will need to have five builds ready for each element type and to swap between them based on what monster you're going to go fight. Thanks to Demon Mode boosting our element, Spiral Slash working with element and affinity, and the big element numbers on your element Dual Blades. Yes, Element Dual Blades is just really strong, has so much potential. Therefore, if you are playing Element Dual Blades, you'll mainly be using Demon Mode, with Spiral Slash as your main offensive Siltbind attack to maximize damage. However, if you are choosing to play Raw Dual Blades, you'll want to use Feral Demon Mode, using Piercing Bind as your main offensive Siltbind. Though, you'll still want to make use of regular Demon Mode to build up Demon Gauge when you need to. Once again though, if you can choose between Element or Raw, you should be always picking Element, it's a lot stronger. But I acknowledge in your original playthrough, there's a damn good chance that you'll need to use Raw because you're facing so many different monsters and you're playing for the game, not farming. Now, a quick word on builds. I'm currently working on a video specifically about this, of course, but I know a lot of people are still going to want some basic information until then. Baseline, your dual blade builds will want weakness exploit, critical boost, critical eye, and chain crit as your priority, weakness exploit being the most important by far. You always want to be attacking the weakest point, and that makes you do more damage on that point. For element builds, you'll also want a good element weapon, and to match that with five element attack of said element, then the critical element skill. We have various rampage decorations to consider as well, Elm Bane being a great pick if the monster has suitably high element weakness. But there are other ones I would suggest and will do in that proper video. I hope that information gives you something to work with though, but look out for the proper video soon. Now your scroll setup is going to be preference in a way, but there are going to be some ones I really would suggest. At very least, one scroll should have piercing bind on it, so my blue one here does, while the other scroll should have spiral slash, like my red one. Now feral demon mode should be on the scroll that has piercing bind, like in this case, and then regular demon mode should be with spiral slash, like it is here. 
Your main scroll then should have Shrouded Vault, the one that you're playing generally in combat, so that you're able to counter whenever you need to in that moment. While your other scroll should be the one that has Iron Shine Silk for you to swap to and then buff up with that when needed. Then it really depends on whether you're playing ground or aerial jewel blades, whether you'll have Demon Flurry Rush or Demon Flight on both scrolls, like you see in my case. Lastly, I like Slide Slash and I run it on both scrolls because I like the movement it provides while costing no stamina while I'm doing that. But as you can see, those are my scroll setups and why. All right, now let's talk about ground and aerial jewel blades because that's something I've referred to throughout this video. These are the combos you should be using with each. To keep it simple, we have ground style, which is essentially having better movement around the monster due to your demon flurry rush into evade, into demon flurry rush, into evade. You can do this permanently as long as you have the stamina to do it so you're constantly attacking while moving and the idea is to find the sweet spot you're moving around the monster while it's attacking moving to its weakest point and then going all in on that weakest point until the monster starts moving and trying to attack you again at which point you just keep moving around like a buzzing fly always constantly attacking looking for the weak spot but never being in one place that's a very fun play style and you should recognize it from world but the fact of the matter is it still has lower output output than aerial. Aerial by comparison as you can see has us leaping up, doing lots of attacks in the air, jumping back down and then yeah in a similar way infinite comboing just in a different way and you can see the numbers are pretty damn high and this is just a training dummy of course. We also have another mode of that where we're doing an arch demon mode where you're able to interrupt it and come down a lot faster for some nice burst damage but you can do the same thing in the demon mode version where you interrupt it and get back down even quicker if you need to get back down. Like I said, this is not a basic tutorial on Jewel Blades and Rise, but just an acknowledgement of the two playstyles. Overall, Aerial has better output and Sunbreak still, but with the buffs to certain parts of ground Jewel Blades, it's more viable and ultimately play what you want. I'm just giving you the information that Aerial has the best output. But now let's talk about some of the really cool combos you can do in Sunbreak now. For example, the best Wyvern Ride Burst combo. By using Piercing Bind like so, then scroll swapping and immediately using Spiral Slash, you can do an absolute truck ton of special damage, which works as an incredibly effective way to get a wyvern ride on say a non-main target monster and go get a wyvern ride or if you desperately want to get a wyvern ride you can spam special damage using that combo and get one on your main target now a quick look at the best burst combos for each playstyle. If you're playing element, then as I said, you'll want to have a scroll that has demon mode and slide slash equipped on it. When you knock down a monster or you're looking for a burst window, my suggestion to you is to demon flight and then spiral slash into the target's weakest point. As you can see, that was 17 hits for nearly 2,000 on the dummy in just a moment. During a knockdown, I would say you're able to pull off at least two of these combos in all scenarios, and then you may even be able to pull off three if you've got an extra wire bug ready for the knockdown. Meanwhile, if you're playing raw, therefore you're playing feral demon mode and piercing bind, the best way to get the most damage out of that combo, I walk up, I begin feral demon mode, which is just an attack, then I piercing bind, then I'm going to demon flurry back in, and then I'm going to immediately do blade dance, just like we're doing in general rise for ground gameplay. And as you can see, it's also about 2000 damage, but it's a much slower, longer combo. The chance of you getting two of those off during a knockdown is less likely, but it's possible. But there you have it. That is my guide to Jewel Blades and Sunbreak. When I learned about the Spiral Slash actually working with Element and Affinity, it shocked me because, you know, they did limit Piercing Bind to Raw, but then they haven't done that for Spiral Slash. It's led to a very fun combo that makes more sense with Aerial Jewel Blades, I think, compared to having to Piercing Bind, which was awkward by comparison. The insane element damage potential of this weapon now is very exciting and very fun to play. Now, the obvious downside is the work and investment involved to set up five different builds, to maximize that potential. But the thing is, once you've got them, you've got them, right? And it becomes as easy as just swapping loadout before the hunt, depending on what you're about to hunt. As I'm sure you're wondering though, based on that, the build video is coming soon. I'm just gonna finish that up in the next few days. So please keep a lookout for it. Otherwise, thank you for watching the video. I really do hope this helped you. And if it has, please do drop a like on it so we can make more content like this in the future. For now though, I've been Hollow. You've been you. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice
to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye <laughs>